Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's sermon is called Bind the Strong Man. Before I get into the methods or the the ways that the devil is going to attack the body of Christ, the way that he's going to attack the strong man, I'm going to get into what constitutes a man to be strong. Because we have to remember that what the world may consider to be a strong man may not be what God considers to be a strong man. And so with that being said, the first thing about a man that is going to make him strong is going to be his mind if he has the mind of christ because and some of you may argue with me and say well if if a man uh is being tempted in the flesh or he has weak flesh then the devil can take advantage of him but well let, let me throw this at you okay if a man is in a hospital and the man is brain dead can the devil tempt that brain dead man he's in a comatose state how can he tempt that man? What, what type of powers, what type of strategies does he have to tempt that man? There's nothing he can do if that man is brain dead. He won't be able to be tempted at all. And see, if we have the mind of Christ, we will have complete power over the devil rather than him having power over us. And that will make the devil extremely mad. But with that being said, if a man is brain dead, can the devil go into the hospital and lay a, a stack of money over his body and try to bribe him, manipulate him? Can he take $1,000 bills and smack the guy in the face and say, if you serve me, I'll give you this? The man is not going to even be aware of what the devil's trying to do. The next point is if the devil comes and brings all the most beautiful women in the world and uh, tries to manipulate the man through lust and through perversion, can he have any ground with that brain dead man? The answer is no. The man won't be aware of the beautiful women that are surrounding his hospital bed. The next thing is if the devil tries to tempt him with drugs and alcohol and even blows smoke in his face. The man, again, won't be aware of what the devil's trying to do. So if we have the mind of Christ, there is nothing at all that the devil can do to attack us. So that is the first thing that establishes a man to be strong, as if he has the mind of Christ. Now, what happens after we have the mind of Christ is that we are going to have authority because Jesus is going to give us authority. You know, if you look at Genesis, he said that he gave man dominion over all things, all the birds of the birds of the air, the beasts of the land, uh, the fish in the ocean, and he even gave uh, Adam permission to name them. Okay, so a man who is strong has authority, and he has a God-given role according to the word of God to be a leader. And I'm going to read the Bible verse that talks about that. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is the man. Now, this is not editorially speaking. This is specifically gender speaking. Okay. And the head of Christ is God. Okay, and the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay, so the next thing that's going to make the man to be strong is giving him freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from being uh, dictated by the devil through sin. Okay, and if you ever watch any type of mafia movies where uh, the mafia wants to control a business owner... And the business owner is not playing the games of the mafia. He won't exactly give in to the demands and the commands of the mafia. So what does the mafia do if they can't get to the strong man specifically? What they'll do is they'll blackmail him through his kids or through his wife. He will go and attack the, the business owner's kids and he'll say, look here, 
okay, you don't have to give me 50% of your income, that's fine, but it's going to cost you your kids. I will be following your kids around and I will kill them, I will torture them, I will rape your wife. So, so and this is what the devil does to a man, a Christian, is if he can't attack the man, he's going for the wife. If he can't attack the wife, he's going for the kids. And he's going to use that to blackmail the strong man. All right. And the next thing that I want to talk about is what the devil is going to do to bind the strong man. Okay. Look at this. A social security number. How can the devil bind the strong man if he can't even find where the strong man is at? He has to be able to locate the strong man in order to bind him. And the American government has established the social security number. I believe, and don't quote me, it was around 1954 that they established the social security number. And it is like a electrical collar, a dog collar, to be able to track the man wherever he goes and to follow him and to keep record on every single thing he does. The man won't even be able to open up a bank account without using a social security number. So he's going to use the social security number to, uh, to, to, to find the strong man, to locate him so that he can bind him. The next thing that the devil is going to do is he's going to tempt the man with sin. He's going to tempt him with sin. He's going to wait until the man is having a rough time in life and he's going to present to him something that's going to seem to be able to help his situation, but it's going to take him out of the will of God. And then also what the devil is going to do, as I said before, he's going to attack the marriage. He's going to attack the marriage. And in America right now, we have, I believe, a 50% divorce rate in America. And also, we have a 99% of all women, after they divorce the husband, they get custody, custodial rights to the kids. So the devil is after taking the role of a father given by God from him. And so after he does that, then the man gets stuck with child support. And child support, in essence, like the name of it sounds like a good thing, but in actuality, the actual system or the, uh, the operation of it is very demonic because it puts the man in slavery. So you have a woman that had uh, one source of income, right, when she was living with her husband, and then she had her husband's source of income, so they had two jobs. All right, now you take the husband out of the picture, right? Because she divorced him or he divorced her or whatever the reason, they're divorced. Now she has only one, one source of income. And then she uh, finds a new lover, gets married again. Now she's right back in the same situation, but she had kids with her ex. So now she gets the money from child support. Now she has three sources of income. So the woman is actually rewarded rewarded and benefited by divorcing her husband. And if you don't believe the things that I'm saying, I encourage you to investigate on your own. In fact, investigate on your own anyways. Don't take my word for it. I actually have a friend that has a master's degree in counseling and works for the court system in Ohio and North Carolina. And she said that 99.9% .9 of the time, the woman becomes the custodial parent by the government. The government always gives the woman uh, custodial rights as a parent. And the only time that the man will ever be a custodial parent is if the woman gives permission for the man to be the custodial parent. Or if the woman is incarcerated or locked up, then the man will be temporarily custodial parent until she gets out of prison and then the child is issued right back to the husband or to the woman. All right, and with on that note in that direction, let's look at what's taking place. I actually called around different colleges throughout the country and I talked to the corporate office and I talked to the marketing department and according to them, I called uh, Tri-C, which is a community college in Cleveland, Ohio. Then I called Cleveland State University, which is a university in Cleveland. And then I called California State University and I asked them, what is the percentage of gender graduation. And according to the director of Tri-C, the gender of graduation for women 
is 74%. 74% of females graduate per year, which means that there's only 26% of males graduating per year. All right, and then I also took the, the liberty to call different prisons, different uh, state prisons throughout the country, and I called a few of them. And also I wanna throw this at you that America right now is the number one incarceration percent and has the highest recidivism rate for people reoffending in the entire world. We have more people, more men in prison than anywhere else in the world. I'm not saying that that's something to be proud of. It's, it's you know, it's really an abomination in, in, in God's eyes and in my eyes. So in Ohio, we have right now 32 male prisons. And then we have two women prisons, prisons established for women. And one of those two only holds 364 women. And all of the other male prisons hold two to 3,000 males. So look at what you have. You have a majority of males being in prison, and then you have a majority of the females graduating college. Let me ask you a question. If the devil is going to attack, how is he going to attack and what is he going to do? I don't believe that these statistics and these facts are coincidence. I don't think it happened by accident. And you have a child being born in America with this system already established and set up for him. It's not set up for his success. It's set up for his failure. And the next thing that the devil is going to do to attack the strong man, after he takes away his freedom, after he gets a felony, and I believe it's 60% of all males in this country have a criminal record, which means that they have a, a little to no chance of getting a job. That's why a lot of people with felonies will be, um, they'll try to create their own business. And now the devil's making all ki kinds of hoops for a man to start his own business. So you have the situation of a majority of the men in prison and a majority of the females uh, with custody of the kids and with uh, college degrees. So the power of the man being a leader given by God, it's not my opinion, it's not the way I would prefer or what my choice is, it's the, what the Bible says, that God gave the man to be the leader and to control his household. And if someone said, well, that's not in the Bible, well, let's see what the Bible says. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, he must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity. But if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he be able to take care of the church of God? The answer is, I don't know. And really, the answer is he won't be able to take care of the church of God. And ultimately, what the devil's goal is, is not even that he cares about the man's household or he cares about his kids or his wife. No, he don't care about that, literally. He cares about the bottom line, the bride of Christ, the church. That's what he's trying to attack. That's what he's trying to attack. And he's using all types of strategies, all types of strategies to go about doing this. And you know, I'm not trying to just throw a huge problem at you and leave you in despair. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I, I want men to be wise and to see what the devil's doing. The devil is attacking the image of man by using uh, TV, movies, radio, media. He's abusing the image and the role of man. He does one extreme. He either shows the man as such a servant to his wife and to his kids, and that he makes them to be so incompetent that the man can't even tie his own shoes without permission or help from his own wife, or they show the other extreme of the man that he's he's such a tyrant and a dictator and so abusive that everyone's afraid of him because he's just out of control but you never see any more a role of an authoritative godly christian role of a man who's using his position of power given by god properly 
according to the word of God. You don't see that on TV anymore. So now you have this new generation growing up thinking that a man is supposed to be a fool or he's supposed to be extremely violent and cause people to uh, fear him. And either one of those extremes is not biblical. It's not God. So the devil's going to attack the image and the reputation of man. And he's doing it. He's doing it successfully. I hate to say it. And these, uh, this thing with this, the women uh, graduating, it's 74% of females are graduating more than the males. I, I encourage you to prove me wrong. You call the colleges and you find out what is the percentage of females graduating compared to the males. Call around whatever state you're in. Go find out. I know within my own self, the first English class that I was in, out of 50 people, I was the only man. And I know from doing prison ministry out of uh, two different uh, buildings and uh, 11 floors on each side, there's only one floor for women. The rest is for men. So the devil's incarcerating all the men and graduating all the female to offset the proper role of man, to attack the role and the image and the authority and the children and the seed of man. And I'm telling you right now, this country, whew, we're headed in the wrong direction. We need to pray for this country. We need to fast. We need to repent of our sins. We need to start reading the Bible. And women, if you have been abusive, because see, it's not so much you that's doing it. I don't blame women. I blame the a spiritual wickedness in high places that is stripping the authority from man and giving it to a woman. But if you're a Christian woman, it should be your role, your duty to give that power and that authority back to the man so that things could be in the way that they should be. And I'm not saying this is the way that we should be, but look at the women in India. They walk behind the husband. You know, America is so far away from that. Like, and I'm not, is that really the most worst, horrible thing that can take place as a woman walking behind the man? If you think about it, it's such an abomination in American women. Why? Because of pride, because of corruption of what uh, has constantly been beat into the brains of both genders. And I will say this, and it might almost sound like I'm completely contradicting myself, but I'm not. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. That is true in the spiritual realm. But God has established a natural realm to follow after the spiritual realm. And with that being said, he's established roles for both genders to be obedient to the word of God. And if you, if you violate those roles, then you're going to be under a curse. So repent of your sin. Ask God to forgive you. It's not too late for you to humble yourself and to follow the ways of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.